When I was thinking about this topic and, and Richard first threw this out there, it made me think of a few months ago, someone had come to me and said, I don't know what I'm doing wrong with my business. And I said, okay, well, tell me a little bit about your problem. What is it that you perceive to be the issue in your business? And he said to me, he said, well, I go to networking, I do all of these networking events, but I don't think this networking thing is all that it's cracked up to be. And I said, tell me more. Why isn't it all it's cracked up to be? He said, I go, I meet people, I meet lots of people, but I don't get anything from it. And the more I questioned him, the more I realized that he was what I call an accidental Networking. If something came up, he was all about it. He went to the networking event. He put his time in and he left and he had some business cards. But he didn't have a clearly defined objective for going to the event, nor did he have a plan on what he was going to do when he got there and what he was going to take away. And that's what I want to talk to you about today because I think this is the biggest mistake that people make in networking. Don't be the accidental networker. What I've developed is I've developed a networking planner. And in the planner, it will help you map out how you should approach your networking. So you would define the types of groups that you are looking for. You might already know these groups. They could be online groups. They could be people that you meet with on a regular basis. They could be someone through the church. They could be anywhere. But if you can define your groups, and then for each group, you'll take the following steps. You'll want to define what is my aim? What am I trying to do with this group? Then you'll define, and why is this important to me? So you're telling yourself, these are the types of people that I'm looking to connect with in this very specific group. Then in the group, if you can do some research, <sighs> before you get there, or maybe you already know because you've heard some people were invited to networking events and stuck around for that. If someone's invited you, find out more from them about the group. Google is your friend, Bing is your friend. There's lots of tools that you can use to find out about who's in the group, how they meet, what's expected, what outcomes the group likes to have. You might even want to profile the types of people who are in that group. I know that there's some networking groups that I'm a part of that we're able to see people's profiles online because we're a part of the group. So that tells me some of the industries that people are in, some of the businesses before I even step in the room to talk with them. And I can develop my targets of people that I'd like to meet and converse with. Then you want to have your elevator speech. And everybody talks about the perfect elevator speech if it's 30 seconds, if it's one minute. I take a different approach. I take an approach to, you want to come up with a few short sentences that's going to leave them saying, tell me more. I'm interested. They're going to lean into you and ask for more. And you need to do that for each type of group that you're going to work with. Because it may be different. And you need to know what it is that you're bringing to the table for that group what your offering is. It's very important, a lot of people go into networking thinking, what can I get from this? And as Jim said earlier, it got easier for him when he said, hey, tell me about you and what you give, and then I can give you the opportunity, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So you wanna know what you're providing to the group, what what it is, why you're an asset to that group, and then you want to be able to ask what it is that that person is seeking and what they need in that group. When you go to the group, you want to have a step-by-step -step plan. So you know what you're going to take away. We've talked about your objectives for this group, but you want to have something that you're going to take away. You're going to have some action items. I'm a project manager, so I think in terms of action items and plans and schedules and dates. You want to have something that you say, I'm going to meet three people, I'm going to meet two people, I'm going to meet one person, I'm going to then contact them so that we can meet for coffee and talk about their needs again. 
we're going to do that by a certain date, I'm going to follow up with that. You want to have an action item list when you leave there. And it's not enough just to have the action item. My gentleman from the story earlier, he would have the action items and things would delay him from taking action on them. And I told him that lowers your, your value to the other person because they think that either you're not serious or maybe you're too busy to talk with them. If you've made a commitment to someone, stick with it and deliver that. Even if it's just a follow-up call or an email to let them know, hey, I haven't forgotten about you and I want to honor my commitment to you. The last thing that I want to talk about is how you're going to measure your success in your networking plan. Because everything's about metrics. Did I hit my targets? Did I get what I wanted? How much did I invest to get what I wanted? So you want to define what's going to be successful for you. How would you qualify this as a success in your mind? How much of your time do you want to spend with this group to achieve that success? And then when you're done working your plan and you start to revise your plan to see if this is a worthwhile activity and how you could better this and continue it, you also want to have in there, okay, here's what I did, here's the results that I got, and here's how much time that I spent. That way you can turn that into something where you have a return on your investment and you can have something that you know that you can determine if it's worthwhile for you to continue this activity or if you need to change your path or change your group. Really, developing your networking plan is just like anything else in your business. You plan for it, you work the plan, and you revise the plan until you achieve success. And I challenge you all to develop a strong networking plan.